thought I'd show everybody my favorite hardware store where I get all my hardware for my radios. I can walk in there and buy one tiny little lock washer if that's all I need. Can't do that at the big box stores. Good service in here too. Well, it's uh, the next day, folks, and I'm getting ready to apply the navel jelly to the rear of the chassis. As you can see, it, it appears that all the plating is gone. I don't know if there's any plating underneath that stuff at all. I don't think so. And how well the navel jelly does back here, which I don't think it's going to do very well, because there's just nothing it can work with. Uh, depending on how well it does will determine whether or not I ultimately wind up painting this chassis. If it doesn't work, I'll be searching for some good silver paint. Well, I'll be darned. After about 40 minutes of soaking, I decided to let it sit quite a while. I just did a wipe down and son of a gun, look how good that looks. I still have to do a second application, but my goodness, I, I was amazed. Well, we're, we're doing good on this, only a few more small spots, maybe another day of you know messing around with it, trying to get it shined back up. I would like to put a clear coat on this chassis rather than paint it. And it looks like I might be able to accomplish that so far. I'm not a very good artist, but there's something uh, I want to cover uh, for all you chassis cleaners out there, and, and it involves these tube sockets. A lot of these old radio tube sockets have double layers, they're like this, one layer on top of another. They're not a single. They're not a single layer, and you know the the pins uh, on the bottom stick off down through and come out the bottom layer. The top layer just has little holes there that line up with these pins uh, at the bottom so you can put your tubes in. Now, looking at these, uh, looking at the socket from the top with this top layer removed, here's what we've got. We've got your tube, so you've got your tube pin holes, the larger holes, you know, on the bottom. And going down through those holes, are brass connectors. Now these brass connectors are shaped almost like to, you know, like like that right there. They're just a little, I don't know, a little angular thing, and they've got they've got the tube uh, pin right there where the the tube, I mean, the, the tube uh, the catcher that, that the pins go in. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, they sit on the bottom layer like this. They they go over to the pin and down. They go over to the pin and down, over to the pin and down, just like that, all the way around. Now, once they're in place, and this portion right here, this portion of the uh, the pin is down through the hole, then they go ahead and take the top layer of the socket and sandwich it down on top. They put it on top. So all of these things are sandwiched between the two layers. So here you come with your cleaner, you know, your spray cleaner, you come with your navel jelly, you come with your soap powder, you come with your whatever you're going to clean your chassis with, and you get it down in those holes right there, and it runs between the two layers, which is something you do not want. You do not want any crud and crap between those two layers. What happens, it dries, or it stays damp, or gooey, or whatever. And you turn on your radio, and it could be days later, and all of a sudden you've got sparking going on, sparking between these metal pieces uh, bet uh, that are sandwiched between the two levels. Uh, I had one one time that I, I could turn the lights out, and even with the tube out of there, I could turn the lights out, hit the power, and boy, she, you could just see the sparks. It, it was it scared one guy. I, I put the YouTube, uh, I, I put the video up on uh, uh, on a YouTube type format. It wasn't actually YouTube, but he, he commented, he said, my God, that scares me half to death. They could burn my house down. Exactly right. So be careful around these tube sockets. Be careful with these old radios. Don't trust these things. These things, you know, these radios were built long before we had all kinds of, uh, you know, underwriter laboratory standards and all kinds of stuff. You know, they are dangerous. They are dangerous. No matter what we do to make them safe, they will continue to be dangerous. You can fuse them. You can uh, put all kinds of new wires in them, uh, new modern tubes, but it all boils down to the old tube socket where the high voltages are and the tubes. So be careful. By the way, what I just told you 
also applies to speaker plug sockets. Lots of high voltage there. Lots of sparks. During the course of using your navel jelly, you'll you won't be able to get in all the little areas with it. It just you just can't get in. So what I do is take some lacquer thinner, put it in a little bowl, and take an acid brush that I've cut real short. Get the bristles real short. Then I can go ahead and get down in the areas. Uh, you know, there's no way we're going to completely rejuvenate this chassis by just cleaning it. It, it would take paint or replating to do that. So what we do is we just do our best. You know, we do our best to get it as clean as possible. And uh, there is another step to this process, and I'll show it to you uh, probably in a later video or maybe even the next video. So the old lacquer thinner doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't, doesn't hurt the sockets. Uh, it doesn't hurt the aluminum or anything else. And it evaporates real quick. The only thing is you got to do it outside. Don't use lacquer thinner inside the house or any kind of enclosed area. You know, it, it'll, it'll cause you to pass out. <laughs> it's, lacquer thinner is dangerous stuff. Now, I'll continue going over this with the navel jelly bit by bit by bit by bit. You'll recall I told you it was slow and tedious, but the results usually turn out pretty darn good. Here's something that just popped up, <clears throat> and I'm kind of glad it did. Here's a very large capacitor, a paper and wax capacitor. By the way, before I go any further, that's that black resistor yesterday, that long black 2 watt resistor that we owned out that's no good. Get a much better look at it here. Check that out, man. That thing's all burnt to pieces. Anyway, back to the capacitor. This capacitor, when I look on the parts uh, placement diagram, is located right there. See it right there, that square? And it's there and it's there. So when I look at the number and I go down and follow the arrow down, it comes out to part number 68. 68. Now I come, uh, let me put it back over here so we can still see it better. When I, when I come down to 68 on the parts list, it says that part number 68 is the pilot lamp for the shadow meter. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, what I'm trying to point out here is Philco was notorious for getting the wrong information on schematics and the wrong information on their parts lists. You have to really scrutinize them very closely. They made a lot of errors. I don't know why. Anyway, so now we're stuck. You know, we know that's not a light for a shadow meter. So now we need to find it on the schematic and figure out what size it is because they didn't write the sizes. Uh, Philco didn't write sizes on, their, on, their, on many of their capacitors. They just put a, a number on the capacitor. And the number on this one is 304134S. You know, one could say, well, why don't you just go to the parts list and see if it lists a uh, 304134S on the parts list here. You know, I did. It's not there. Well, so we're back to square one again. So I have an unidentified capacitor, which may have been a replacement because look at the globby looking solder jobs here. This is horrible. This is one of the things about the old days with the old uh, radio and TV repairman. You know, the guy down the block that had the corner store. He could fix just about anything, it seemed like. They may have been pretty sharp on electronics, but their soldering skills were terrible. And these old radios show that. They could not solder at all. And, of course, a lot of it had to do with the old equipment in those days and the kind of solder they used. And uh, nowadays we have some really nice stuff, you know. It makes it a lot easier. So I don't want to take anything away from the very first uh, electronic technicians, but I'll tell you what, soldering is a skill. Soldering is not something you just jump in there and do. You have to learn the right way to do it. Okay, back to where we're at. We've got a, we've got a uh, capacitor that we don't know where it is on the schematic. We can't find the part number, we can't find anything, so where is it? Go back to our shunt resistor that we looked at yesterday. One end of the shunt resistor comes up and it's connected to that very large capacitor. And the capacitor, the other end of that uh, capacitor is connected to ground. I've already ohmed it out. Shunt resistor, 
one side of the capacitor, the other side of the capacitor to ground. And there's another capacitor that comes up here also. I don't know if you can see it from underneath. And it's, they share a common ground. There's two or three things connected to that ground. Now this wire included. So let's go to our schematic. Let's find the first video. We find our shunt resistor. This thing is held in place here by a lamp. Alright. Alright. Let's find our shunt resistor here. It is right here, the shunt resistor around the shadow meter. We said one end of it was connected to a capacitor to ground. Let's follow this right hand and let's go down this road here first. When we come down to the road and into an intersection, we go up, 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 up. Nope, go straight into a coil. No capacitor there. We come a little bit further. No capacitor here. We run into a resistor, a 4000 ohm resistor. By the way, that's the burnt resistor. So it's not in, it's not north and it's not east. So let's go back west to our first connection on the other side of that shunt resistor. And we go down. There is our capacitor to ground, right there. It's a 0 .05 uh, microfarad capacitor and it is part number 66. Part number 66. Now, let's go to our parts list again and look up part number 66 and it says it is a condenser or a capacitor and the actual part number should be 304020 so I think what's happened is someone has replaced the, uh, the 304020 with a 304134 in the past so that's a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor well, I think we'll wrap up this video there. We have many more videos to go. I hope you all don't get too bored, tired, or worn out by it all. Uh, I did get a comment from one of my viewers. He wanted to know, well, how, how do you identify capacitors, resistors, diodes? Well, we'll cover some of that next time. It won't be that difficult. It's real easy. Uh, there won't be any diodes, as you may know what a diode is. There's no little, no little tiny black diodes, uh, silicon diodes in these older radios. If there were to be a diode in here, it would be a glass tube, you know, a, a tube. Uh, I think next time, so we'll cover some of that, but anyway, next time I think what we're going to do, I'm not going to plunge into changing all these parts out. We'll, we'll take care of that later. I want to do, I want to continue with the cleaning effort, and next time you, what we have here is a band switch. It's, it has three wafers. One, two, three. Now sometimes, let me get this light over here a little closer, see if it helps. You got this one, this one, and this one, and there's little contacts all around them. Sometimes I run into radios that had, my God, had a ton of these discs, uh, these uh, wafers with the, with the contacts on them. That what happens is the center turns, and uh, they're all controlled by this knob up here, your band switch. We'll go ahead and clean these babies up. I'll show you the right way to do it. That I do know is the right way. There's only one way to clean band switches, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And uh, until then, uh, once again, I, I appreciate you, you watching me, and, and the comments have been great. Thank you all very much. This is John. I'll be back.